Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready. This is Daniel White IV with the Second Coming Watch update. My father, Daniel White III, is on vacation. This is update number 394. Let's take a quick look at today's prophecy-related headlines, which point towards the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. First, according to the Los Angeles Times, President Vladimir Putin said on Friday that Russia will continue to supply weapons to Syria in the event of a U.S. military strike as three naval ships headed to the eastern Mediterranean to bolster the country's fleet near the Syrian coast. In response to a journalist's question at the conclusion of a Group of Twenty summit in St. Petersburg, he said, Will we help Syria? Yes, we will. We are helping them now. We are supplying weapons and we are cooperating in the economic sphere. President Obama used the meeting of world leaders to press his case for punitive strikes against the government of Syrian President Bashar Assad for a reported August 21st chemical attack on pro-rebel suburbs of Damascus. He met with Putin for about 20 minutes on a Friday, but failed to persuade the Russian leader. Second, according to Reuters, a U.S. official said on Friday that turmoil in Syria and Egypt is nudging Israeli and Palestinians towards peace, as Secretary of State John Kerry flew to Europe for talks about that conflict and a possible U.S. strike on Syrian targets. While the chief U.S. diplomat's three-day trip was originally designed to focus on Israeli-Palestinian peace talks and will include a lengthy meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, Syria is sure to consume many of his conversations with European and Arab diplomats. Kerry will meet European Union foreign ministers in the Lithuanian capital on Saturday as the U.S. Congress weighs whether to give President Obama the authority to conduct military strikes on Syria. A senior U.S. State Department official said Syria's civil war, as well as the upheaval in Egypt, gives Israelis and Palestinians an incentive to end their conflict. Third, according to Religion Today, Indonesian pastor Onikesi Zega and three of his assistants were arrested recently by a district police officer after being accused of baptizing Muslims. The allegations were made on June 20th when a Muslim family reported that a family member had become a Christian and had been baptized by the pastor. Police told the pastor and his assistants that the Muslim family had planned to catch them at a nearby drugstore. Police also seized Christian books in various languages as well as a notebook. Two people who admitted to being baptized by the pastor have since returned to Islam. Fourth, according to the Times of Israel, Russia is warning that a U.S. strike on Syria's atomic facilities might result in a nuclear catastrophe and is urging the UN to present a risk analysis of such a scenario. The warning comes from Russia's foreign ministry spokesman Alexander Lukashevich. He said in a statement on Wednesday that a strike on a miniature reactor near Damascus or other nuclear installations could contaminate the region with radioactivity, adding the consequences could be catastrophic. IAEA spokeswoman Gil Tudor told the AP in an email Thursday that her agency is ready to consider the questions raised if it receives a formal request to do so from Moscow. Russia's Interfax news agency says that Moscow intends to bring up the issue in next week's 35-nation IAEA board meeting. Fifth, according to AFP, Turkey has beefed up its military presence along its southern border with Syria in anticipation of strikes on the, reg on the regime in Damascus. A 20-vehicle convoy with the tank contingent was deployed to the border area on Wednesday and was followed by 15 more vehicles on Thursday. Syria's northwestern border with Turkey is one of the few areas on the frontier, still in the hands of President Bashar Assad. The move is just the latest in a series of reinforcements deployed by the Turkish army to the 560-mile-long border with the war-torn country. Jesus Christ said in Mark 8.38, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. If you are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready today by receiving him as your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead so that you can live eternally with him. 
Pray and ask Him to come into your heart today, and He will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. Follow us on Twitter at secondcomingh and like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash secondcomingherald. Yeah.